<laughs> okay, exciting. Oh, already two. <laughs> Four, oh my goodness, so exciting. So exciting. Thank you all for starting to join us. We are so excited to have you guys here today. We'll do a brief introduction in just a couple minutes, but we want to give people a little bit of time just to settle in, get in, make sure they're all settled to the meeting. Oh my goodness, look at that. 20 already, guys. Wow. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Wow. Oh, this is so exciting. I love GFAS. <laughs> Wow, look at that. All right, well, um, I think we can go ahead and just get started with these 30 that we already have since we're already here and ready to go. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today. Obviously, this is the business school department chat. Um, we are so excited to have you joining us and participating in our digital DFAS. We know that this day is not quite what we expected it to be, but you know, it's raining here in Williamsburg, so some things work out for the best, I guess. Um, we are so excited to have some information for you guys about the business school from our amazing Jennifer Dinky and Beth Snavely. They are awesome and so wise, so they're gonna share a brief PowerPoint with you guys, and then we'll have some time to answer any questions as well. If you wanna take the lead. Hi there, I'm Jen Danke, and I serve as the Assistant Dean of the Undergraduate Program here at the Mason School. And then Beth, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, mute. new to us. Hi guys, welcome. I'm Beth Snavely, Assistant Director for the Undergrad Admissions Program, Majors and Minors Program. Thank you. All right, so what we're looking to do today for all of you that are coming in is to share a little bit of information about the business school, what makes us special. Um, we really wish you could have been here on campus, but we all understand you know, that we're adapting right now for the time being and very much looking forward to being back on campus in the fall semester. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a slideshow so that you've got some information that's available. We're gonna record this session. And then JD, who is our campus admissions liaison, he is gonna be keeping watch of our chat function. Yeah, see, there's JD. Um, and so if you've got questions that pop up along the way, just go ahead and use the chat feature at the bottom of the screen and he's going to collect questions and themes, um, see what things that we cover during our session, and then we'll leave some time for Q&A at the end um, and just see what things that we can do for you. All right, so here we go. Let me get this screen up and shared. All right, so we're talking about pathways to coming into business. And again, you've got my information that's here for our day for admitted students. Oh, hold on trying to see if I can get it to forward through the next slide. There it goes. All right. So when we think about William & Mary's Mason School different, we're, we're different from the other business schools that you're going to see. Uh, we're innovative. We have a very personalized approach to business education. So think big school opportunities, but really small school feel. And that allows, allows us to be transformative in the lives of our students that we're serving. So why business? Why would you be looking at the business school as a potential option for a major and a minor? Well, we understand even more so today how interconnected our economies and marketplaces are and really understanding the fundamentals of business and how we can draw on those skill sets to help solve some of the trickiest problems that are emerging right now. And one of the focuses at William & Mary that you'll hear probably in other sessions and in ours is really helping prepare our students to have an innovative and entrepreneurial mindset so that you can pivot. You can use your communication skills, teamwork, develop a sense of grit, tech skills, and then also a sense of empathy that you're gonna need. So in our rankings, we try not to beg too much, but at some point we've gotta show you the numbers and you really are, the things that we're doing here, we are recognized on a national level for the quality of education that we have, our faculty, our student learning, our preparation for careers and advising, academic excellence, study abroad, um, we've got it all. And so really you're coming into an environment that is prepared and well-versed to have you join us. Program structure. So the business school is structured, we, we would say is a primarily a two-year business school program. So students generally spend their freshman and sophomore year studying liberal arts in the College of Arts and Sciences and then apply for competitive admission to come into the School of Business. And we have two different tracks that students can come into. They can come in as a business major or they can come in as a business minor. 
excuse me. So the business majors, typically most students are starting in the spring semester of their sophomore year or in the fall semester of their junior year. And the first semester is a cohort team-based experience where students are taking all the same courses, our foundational courses in finance, marketing, analytics. We throw in some Excel skills, which are essential, and then some diversity and inclusion coursework so that you better understand how to work in teams. We, in that semester, the courses are all coordinated with our faculty, so you'll be building on case experiences in one course to the next. We also would give a time about two thirds way through the term that we cancel classes for a week and run you through an experiential simulation where you'll be working with our executive partners and your teams to solve some real business problems while you're here. All along the way, we're gonna be giving you some exposure to what kinds of professional development activities you'll need to start looking for your internships and your job career pathways. Beyond that first semester, then students really get a chance to decide what it is that you want to study. And our students choose from four different majors, so either accounting, finance, analytics, or marketing. And then you have the ability to customize by adding on a secondary age area of study that could be one of the major areas, but we also have concentrations in consulting, in sustainability, innovation, entrepreneurship, lots of different things that you can kind of mix and match. So all the students can customize their experience while they're here. The other thing that we've got are a number of practitioner-led courses that you'll get to choose from for electives that might be delivered in short seminar style or as case competitions or other things that are here. Looking at the minors program, the minors differ from the majors really only in the sense that they will focus on one discipline area of study. So rather than having a breadth of a foundation in business across all of the major disciplines, the minors are gonna focus in the area that they have chosen. And oftentimes this will be complementary to the major that they're pursuing across the campus in arts and sciences. Our minors are just as much part of our community as our majors. So they'll still be utilizing our professional development activities with our executive partners and coaches. We're gonna be having the same access to those great elective courses that the students are gonna be taking in the majors program. And then we're also really looking at, at how do we pair this? How do you shape your experience with William & Mary as a whole and use that business minor to complement your studies? So for students that are interested in exploring business at the Mason School, there's a lot of different ways that you get involved doing this early in your career. Because you might be thinking, wait, how do I know if I'm going to come into the business school and yet I haven't been declared right out of the gate as a business student? That's okay. We're going to be working with you as pre-business students on campus. So you'll have the chance to come in and take some of the prerequisite coursework. We have several new offerings that have come out that are really overview courses. So you can kind of try it on for size. We have courses in Business Foundations, which is a great broad-based course that's really looking at all of the different business disciplines and the industries and the functional areas that exist within there. We have a diversity in the workplace course. So how do we think about inclusion of diverse perspectives and why is that so important in making an impact in the business decisions of today? We have a financial services course for students that are coming right on in the door and really thinking that they wanna be looking at all of the different pathways that are available within the financial sector. And we also have an intro to innovation and entrepreneurship course, which has been a great way for students to think about how do I develop those skill sets and the mindset to be looking at the kinds of problems in business. And so that course tends to pull in a lot of our marketing students and our creative thinkers as well. So other ways that students get accustomed to what's available in the School of Business is by getting involved. We have three different centers that serve the Mason School. So the first being our Bully Center for Excellence in Finance. And this center is now open to all students across campus who are considering a career in financial services. The second is our Miller Entrepreneurship Center. And it has been so popular that we are very excited. We just launched a new space, a little bit more central to campus where students can join in in that center. And they're doing everything from rocket pitches to working on cases to doing competitions and then even pairing with entrepreneurs in the local community to solve problems. And our third center is this innovation and design studio. And it's one of William & Mary's very special maker spaces. And actually the picture on this slide is right in our design studio. So it's a classroom that you may not think that you would find in a business school setting, 
but it really lets our students be creative. And anytime I'm going in there, I have no idea how it's gonna be set up. It changes from day to day based on the different faculty and the classes that are being taught in there. The other thing that we have that we really encourage students to kind of start thinking about early is getting involved with some of our student organizations because it's a way for you to attend their events, to talk with our alumni and the panelists that they bring in on a regular basis, to get involved in what does professional development mean in each of those different areas and what are the career pathways that might be available to me. So a plethora of organizations for students to come in. We often see students maybe joining one or two or sometimes even three if they're still exploring and then really narrowing down. So by the time they come in as business students, they are then taking on the student leadership roles and helping organize all of the activities that are going on within the School of Business. So we think about business schools um, beyond the curriculum and what exists and, and what we're doing in the classroom setting. A lot of the, the questions that we get are around the career center support. William & Mary has a fabulous centralized career center. It's called the Cohen Career Center and it actually is a standalone building in the heart of campus. And we partner very closely with our colleagues there to be ensuring that our students are prepared. So everything from one on one advising to workshops and networking sessions to being able to come to career fairs and those career fairs and internship fairs are really geared to all levels of a student during their experience. And so William and Mary, we bring back our alums all the time. They love us. You'll really get that sense of community here and you'll feel it. So students that are coming back that have just recently graduated, might be zero to five years in their career, all the way up to our senior partner level. And so that you can explore kind of within each of the discipline areas, what it is that you would like to, to be doing after graduation and how all of these things might fit together. So William & Mary has got several career fairs that serve the entire campus. And then we also host right within the Mason School of Business, we have a Meet the Firms Friday where all of our accounting and consulting firms are coming in early in the recruitment season. We have from Dog Street to Wall Street, which is less of an recruiting, recruiting event, but more of an alumni connection event to really educate our students about what they need to be successful in that area. And I should say Dog, <laughs> White Dog Street, we have a very historic street that links William and Mary to our historic Colonial Williamsburg area and is called Duke of Gloucester, hence the Dog Street to Wall Street acronym there. And the third area that we have is we've had an explosion in tech sector interest and students that are really trying to find jobs in the analytics and IT space. And so we have a focused event for those students as well that happens in the late fall term. In addition to that, there's a whole list of different kinds of forums and summits that are going on around the clock. So we really make an effort to bring business into the business school. On any given day, you will likely see speakers in the building, you will have speakers in your classrooms, there might be breakfast and lunch sessions going on with our executives and residents. So plenty of activity to keep everybody involved. All right, so another piece that we really want to highlight, um, and you may not know that William & Mary is actually ranked number one in study abroad um, out of all of the public universities across the country. So this is really fundamental to how we think our students are going to contribute. Um, we really want our students to study abroad, either for a semester or for summer programs or winter break programs, or sometimes students are even doing research with faculty or other kinds of service projects. So there's a lot of ways to get involved to be doing that, that really you can tailor to whatever your individual interests and needs are. Um, the other things that we have seen going on is we have a DC semester campus. And so some students are going up there and if they hadn't left the country could actually participate. We just had a, a session that went that was called International Commercial Diplomacy. And so it was looking at all of the different um, NGOs and embassies that are up in the DC area and how we connect those to global policy and decision making. So lots of lots of different things going on in the global sector. All right, so information about joining the business school. So as I mentioned before, we're what you consider primarily a two year business school program, but we do have an early entry option for some of our sophomores that are coming in with some academic credits already. So the process is that students will explore, right, to see what kinds of things you may have of interest. Beth Snavely, who's on our call today, she's great. And so our students will be meeting with her to talk through the application process. What are the components that they need to put in there? How do they really present themselves well going through the selection process? 
And we do unique uh, to William & Mary that doesn't necessarily offer the same kind of opportunity to other schools is we have both a fall and spring semester entry points. And this gives a lot of flexibility to our students who might be wanting to fit a study abroad semester in sometime during sophomore or junior year for students that might be double majoring. Um, some of our students that are on a pre-med track might want to finish off many of their prerequisite courses to be able to sit for their exams before coming into the business school. So we can move all of those around um, as our students really want to be coming into the program. Couple of things to keep in mind, and this is pretty standard across all business schools, is that there is a set of prerequisite courses that students are gonna need to take. So an introductory accounting course, micro and macroeconomics, calculus, and statistics. And one thing that I'll throw out there, just so that you're aware of, if you end up doing AP stats in high school, we actually have a different business statistics course for you to be taking once you're coming on in to William & Mary, um, just to make sure that we're getting you the really strong fundamental background so that you can be doing the kind of analytics work that is gonna be required of you as a matriculating major or minor in our program. And then the last thing that you have to think about is how many credits you have. And so as long as you've completed those prerequisites and you will reach what we call junior academic standing, so 54 earned hours on your William & Mary transcript, you're eligible to come in and start in the School of Business. Um, the last thing to think about that I throw up in this one is some of our students already know that they're interested in pursuing a Master in Accounting or a Master of Science in Business Analytics. And so William & Mary offers an accelerated program where students can finish their undergraduate studies in three years and then spend their final year in one of our master's degree programs within the Mason School. All right, so Miller Hall. Miller Hall is amazing. <laughs> and for those of you that haven't had a chance to come, I do hope, um, you know, maybe things will open up a little bit later this summer and you'll be able to, to come through on campus. But if not, a way to get a quick building tour, I've got a link on here that you can go and see, you know, what's the feeling of our place? Uh, Miller Hall is very special. We've been in this building for about 10 years. And when we have visitors come in, and Beth will agree with me on that, people will say, there's no way this building is 10 years old because it looks just as new as the day that we opened it. But this space has really transformed the way that we think about business education. And so Miller Hall hosts not only our undergraduate program, but our two residential master's programs in accounting and business analytics, a full-time MBA program, an executive MBA program, and also our corporate education center. And so it's a lot of activity that are going on at any point in time, but it really lets us capitalize on the folks that are coming to campus. And so we might have a guest speaker speaking in one of our MBA programs and then turning around and offering a forum to our undergraduate students. And then the next day working with our corporate ed center. So you'll feel a lot of energy within Miller Hall. The other uh, link that I wanna point out to you is we have an undergraduate view book that's available right on our main webpage. And this will get you even more detailed information about the kinds of opportunities that are available here on campus for our students. And then finally, a link to the Mason website where you can learn more in the details of the nitty gritty about the academics and the coursework and our faculty that we have here. All right, so I know I've gone through a bunch of information kind of quick, but we wanted to make sure that we had plenty of time for all of you that were joining to be able to ask your questions because we really want to tailor our time together with the kinds of things that you want to know more about. So JD, I'm gonna, kind of shift to you and see what kinds of questions we may have had coming up. Oh, JD, you're on mute. Sorry about that, everyone. We just got a great question about the accelerated master's programs. Would you be able to talk a little bit about that? Sure, so for our students that are looking at particularly the profession of accounting, the vast majority of students who will be studying accounting as an undergrad are gonna be encouraged by our faculty to go through, and I think I can stop sharing this slide and say hello to all of you. There we go. Um, so the vast majority of our students that are looking to go into accounting will oftentimes start within public accounting. Um, and when they're doing earning that CPA designation becomes really important. And so for students that are able to 
condense their undergraduate coursework into three years, they'll end up earning 120 academic credits, so that's enough to confer your degree, and then add an additional 30 credits to get you up to the 150 that you'll need to be sitting for the CPA exam and then also to earn your licensure. And so those students will be working very closely with our advising team to make sure that we've got all of your general education requirements checked off and your business coursework done to allow you to finish out early. And then for our Master's of Science in Business Analytics program, same thing. Um, and we have students that might be pursuing analytics as even a minor in the business school and then staying on to do that, that final senior year within our master's programs. And that will have a combination of students that were business majors, but also computer science students, data science students, government students, policy students, economics, kind of across the gamut. Um, and it's really just a matter of getting those course credits in a little bit earlier. Awesome. Um, and now we're kind of getting some questions related to um, how many students enter the business school and how many are accepted from the application process. So out of our pool, and like I said, we've got multiple admission cycles. And so we right now in the fall semester, we bring in three cohorts of majors. And in the spring semester, we bring in two cohorts of majors. And each of those cohorts comprises of 45 students. So 135 in the fall and then 90 students in the spring semester. And right now I would say our acceptance rate um, for I'm trying to think for either program is probably about 60 to 70% acceptance rate for the students that are applying. And so a lot of students will really be looking at what are the opportunities in business, um, being prepared to come into our program. Average GPA, we usually are sitting somewhere between a 3.3 and a 3.4, but our admissions process is very holistic. And so it's not just looking at your academic coursework and your prerequisites that you've done and kind of any trends that you've had over your first couple of semesters. But we're also looking at how do you demonstrate your interest in business and are you going to be an engaged member of our community. So have you taken the chance to get involved in some of the campus organizations. Um, have you gone through and attended some of our events that are going on. It can be a whole range of things. And we even find students that don't necessarily know that they want to come into the business school when they start. Um, I would say about half of our students come in knowing they want to do business and about half of our students may come to us thinking, well, maybe I'll do a minor or I thought I was going to be pre-med and now I've realized I really want to do something closer to healthcare administration, for instance, or the students in public policy and government that decide business would be a really great add on. And then even with our art students, um, every year we're seeing a number of our art and art history students and our music majors that are coming on over to add business in. So people will come to us from many directions. So each of those stories is going to look a little bit different in terms of what their involvement was. Um, the other thing that we're going to be looking at is just an essay, right? So telling us why is business a good fit for you? Uh, really try to encourage students to, to do a little bit of self-reflection on that. And so you may have had some exposure to business through your families, parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, sisters, whomever it may be, uh, but trying to identify why is it that you think business will be a good fit for you. All right, awesome. Um, can you talk about any opportunities that there might be available to go to New York City or DC? We're getting some questions about that. Oh, yeah. So you realize we've got a lot of students that are up in the DC area. So there's a couple of things that are going on. Um, so one is the DC semester program, which I don't think as many students know about, um, but it's a great semester and it rotates in different themes and topics by semester. And so interestingly, the, it's going to be a government and political science semester coming up in the fall in DC, which will be fascinating. I think there's an arts and music ones going on and it will be switching through on, on that side of things. So we just came off of doing one for the school business. So I anticipate another one will be coming around um, probably by the time you students are juniors. The other thing that we have in DC is William & Mary has a DC campus. And so right on up in DuPont Circle, students can be going up there even for summer studies and internship courses and other things like that. So lots of activity if you wanted to actually do some, some courses a semester or summer up there. We also offer a number of treks to the DC area because we have such a large number of students that want to seek full-time employment or internships there. Several of our student organizations will go up and do what we call a career trek. And so kind of make the, over a two day run, make the stop at six or seven different companies to talk to alums, to explore some different industries that are there and get a better understanding of the area. 
And then the same thing happens in New York City. So we've got a New York City track that goes for our finance students that are specifically looking at investment banking. And then we have another track that has been going for our marketing students that are really looking at the creative careers. Awesome. Um, we're getting a lot of questions about majoring in something in business and minoring in something outside of business or double majoring in something outside of business. Can you talk about how many undergraduate students choose to do that? Oh, I love that question. Bunches. <laughs> <laughs> so William and Mary, and, and this is a really particular thing with William and Mary. So we are very much a business school that exists in a liberal arts university. And with that, we strongly support our students really making the most of both things. So when you come into the business school, you are not shut off from being involved in all of the different things across campus. And so at any point in time, we have about 60% of our business majors are simultaneously pursuing a major or minor in the arts and sciences. And those combinations can be things that you would think, oh, they're very close, right? Uh, finance and economics, or maybe a marketing and psychology. But we have as much diversity in that. Um, I've got accounting majors that are studying philosophy, right? And they wanna eventually go on to law school. I've got students that are, are doing languages and they would really like to be looking at how do we do innovation in different parts of the world and how do I have the language skills to do that? So lots and lots of combinations. Our advising team in our office, so there's an entire undergrad business program office with professional advising teams. So folks like Beth that are there, and then the advisors that you get coming on, career support as well. We're all here to help students map that out. And so we can get into the nitty gritty of knowing when do you need to have that history senior seminar and being able to juggle your coursework with business all at the same time. So there's a lot of support and it's very common for students to be doing this. And I think it's one of the, the really cool things, right? Because many of you are choosing William & Mary um, because you're multidimensional, right? You're good at a lot of different things. And we don't think you should have to choose only one discipline to study in, right? Um, being able to kind of thrive in an environment that you have that sense of intellectual curiosity is perfectly fine to be doing and you'll be in good company with our students doing that right alongside you. Awesome, and we're getting a couple questions about um, how concentrations work. Can you speak a little bit more to like how you would end up deciding on a concentration? Mm -hmm. So the concentrations I think of um, probably the best way to define them are like mini minors. So you choose a major area of study. Um, so all of our students will have one of those within the school of business, but then you can top that off. And those concentrations are ways to, to really kind of think about how do you differentiate yourself? So for instance, if I've got marketing students that are coming out as majors, right? And they might be doing something also within arts and sciences, but with business school, well, perhaps that marketing student is really interested in the data side of marketing. And so they might look at adding on a business analytics concentration, which will be two additional courses on top of their major coursework to be taking in that area. At the same time, I've got marketing students that may want to go more the entrepreneurship route. And so they'll choose innovation and entrepreneurship as a minor or others that might be looking at, at organizational leadership or consulting, right? And so when you think about all of these different combinations that we have between the majors and the concentrations, we've got about 45 different pathways that students can do along the way. Um, so students can also use that. They might be thinking or being on the fence. Um, do I wanna be an accountant or do I wanna look in the finance side? And so oftentimes students that are, are kind of juggling between those two areas, one will end up being their major and one will end up being a concentration. Awesome. Um, all right, and we have one question that I don't quite know how to answer. It might be a little niche, but is it possible to double major and pursue the three plus one MBA program? Let me think about that. You would have to come in with a bunch of credits um, in order to get that all done in four years. Um, I would not say that's out of the realm of possibility because we actually have some students that could be coming in with upwards of 30 plus AP dual enrollment credits. And so um, about 20% of William Mary freshmen come in as academic sophomores. So it may not be as far out of reach as some of you might be thinking about that. And so a lot of it is gonna be depending on how many kind of credits did you bring in um, to be able to kind of get through those intro course prereqs to get to the upper level courses within those two majors. But one of the things I might encourage students to think about, right, so if you're trying to kind of put all of that together, from the employer side of things, there may not be an advantage to being a double major um, versus being a major and a minor, 
right? Because you've still got those two disciplines of interest that you can be pursuing, but it might give you a little bit more flexibility that if your goal is to graduate early so that you can spend your last year in the master's program, that might be something that we talk about with one of the advisors on how do we make sure that you've got the set of coursework that still um, propels you in the right direction, but might give you a little bit of flexibility if you still want to fit in that study abroad experience or research seminars and other things. Awesome. Um, so how does your curriculum adapt to new technologies and trends? <laughs> That's a good question too. All right, I've got a great, a great example that actually just came out that is a really good partnership example. So this past summer, summer of 2019, we had a connection with um, an alum and someone that was involved with an organization called UiPath. And UiPath was really doing some very interesting innovative technologies. And they were operating the space of something called RPA, which is Robotic Process Automation. And we worked with UiPath and said, okay, this is an emerging technology, really looking at how do we help improve business processes from the tech side. So instead of people keystroking things or pulling together data sets, what kind of mechanisms do we have that can help us make that much more efficient? And so UiPath and the Mason School, we paired together to actually give every one of our new admitted students a bot. And you might think like bot, like not like, a, I keep having this caricature, but it's more like a macro that you can run on your program, but a really cool macro that can cross across different platforms. And so what you could be looking at, so say for instance, I wanted to track um, the price of gold across the world and overlay that with different kinds of current events. And I could go out, right, and multiple times a day, check different websites to see what was going on. But I could actually instead program this bot to go out, get the information, and pull it together for a unique data set that was going on. Um, and so we did all kinds of training through a seminar course and through our orientation to work with our students to be able to use this. And some of our students have done some really unique things. So uh, we had one team that was working on our Mason Investment Club. And so they're looking at kind of how do we manage things in the stocks and what are we going to buy and what are we going to sell with a portfolio. And so they use the bots to go out and do the research for them on different companies and then bring that information together. And so it was saving them oodles of time doing kind of the, the grunt work so that they would have more information available to them um, to make some decisions. So we've got that going on. We've got R and Python are becoming increasingly popular in our analytics curriculum. Our faculty actually just went through an overhaul. So we implemented our business analytics major about four years ago. And right on the heels of that, we, we um, launched our master's of science in business analytics. And so we have several advisory boards that come in on the analytics for us to connect with what's going on in the corporate world and what kind of skills and tools do our students need. And based on that feedback, we're then amending our curriculum to make sure that we're incorporating that kind of exposure. So kind of a long answer to the question, JD, but it's happening all the time, kind of across all of the different platforms that we have within our majors. Absolutely, that's very, very cool. All right, and so we're getting a couple questions about studying abroad um, and whether or not you should do it before coming to the business school or after you've entered. Can you talk a little bit about some of the abroad opportunities that are um, kind of work in tandem with the business school? Sure. So we will see a lot of students actually um, spend that summer between freshman and sophomore year doing a William and Mary study abroad program. It, it tends to be pretty um, popular with our students. And I think William Mary is offering upwards of 25 different study abroad programs. And sometimes the business school has one. So we've been running every couple of years, um, one that's going down into Singapore, that's a finance oriented program. And we're looking at expanding some more things into the summer as well. So summer between freshman and sophomore year, great time to go. Um, another opportunity that I think is really kind of underutilized by students, and we're encouraging more and more to do this, is to think about studying abroad in spring of the sophomore year. And so some of the parents and families that are out there may be thinking in their minds, junior year abroad, right? Everybody goes junior year abroad. And what we're finding is for the students that that sophomore year is a really sweet spot of time to go because you have done a lot of work on your general education requirements. You've finished out your prerequisites that you need for the business school, but it might be in a place that you just need extra credits, right, to get to that junior standing. And so you're not quite ready to be able to come in and take the courses in the business school. And so we say, well, why don't you go abroad and take all the electives that you would like to take? And we will happily transfer, transfer those courses back on in for credit. But it's a way then that you can leverage that global perspective 
in your business courses. And then you can also be talking about that when you're going through your interviews for internships and then subsequently on for the jobs. So sophomore year abroad tends to be the big push and, and Beth has worked with numerous students that are like, wait, maybe do I go abroad, do I not? And we actually have a way that if, if you're nervous about that and you just wanna know like, what is my admission status? You can actually apply. And then once you gain admission, you can tell us you wanna defer for a semester and we will simply hold your spot in the program. You won't have to worry about doing the application while you're abroad and then just be ready to come back once you return back to, to campus. But I do have a number of students that will actually study abroad as juniors, and that is perfectly fine. So our faculty have really protected our curriculum and the sequencing, which I think is, again, pretty special in a two, largely two-year business school program, that they have found that study abroad is so important that they were willing to take a four-semester curriculum and free up at least one semester that students could study abroad. And so for those that do want to go abroad, spring of junior year, great option to go. And then Beth, I'm thinking about one of our panelists that will actually be on the panel um, at the two o'clock session, Rebecca Suskind. She was an accounting student and really wanted to get all of her coursework in. And so she actually spent her final semester abroad. And then she's gonna be matriculating in to our Master of Accounting program um, in the fall semester. So there's really lots of different opportunities. Same thing goes with winter break programs are becoming increasingly popular. Um, we just had a group that was in Southeast Asia that was doing comparative international studies in Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Laos, and bringing that back on. So you can get abroad as many times as you want to any place that you would like to go, and there's plenty of folks here to support you in doing that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, we're getting a couple of questions about how well William & Mary prepares students, or how the Mason School prepares students for life post-graduation. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what some students are doing and how, um, just kind of what kind of general positions they enter into as well? Yeah, so we have a significant number of students um, that are going to come out working. So maybe I, let me back up one, one step. Yeah. Um, in terms of what our students choose for their major areas of study. And so but we have at any point in time, about 40% of our students are finance majors, about 20% are marketing students, and then 60, I've got 40 left, and then I've got about 25% that are sitting in that analytics category right now, and 15% in um, the other discipline. What is it, Beth, that I left out accounting that are there. So, right, so our, our students kind of are spread across the way. That being said, our finance students primarily are going and working in finance. However, I would say that their career pathways are very diverse. So we certainly have our set of students that are going into iBanking, but we also have students going into private sector wealth management. We have students going into asset and insurance management, risk management that are in there. Um, we have a number of students that are going on to consulting projects out of that area. That would be similar to what you would see even in the accounting side. So some students that are gonna go your traditional public accounting route, um, they might be with the big four, they might be in regional sixes. We're also seeing some students shift into actually corporate accounting and governmental accounting as another place that they might be launching. And that often is dictated if they're doing some studies across campus as well. Um, and then with our marketing students, I gotta say, our marketing students are all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> one spot that they go, but I think that's actually okay that we're not driving all of our students into a couple of firms. And so when I look at it, I think Max hires in some of these marketing is like two students in one firm and they're going everything from the West Coast to I've got somebody in Spain that has graduated this year. Um, I've got students that are up certainly in New York City. A lot of students are looking down in the Raleigh-Durham area and then our plethora of students that are in um, kind of in Northern Virginia. So students are all over the place. Um, analytics is the one area where I think there's a lot of innovation and growth for us. So William & Mary has been very much recognized that we have students that are strong in the analytics space. So we're starting to do a lot more partnerships with our tech companies and tech sector. And especially right now, we think that that skill set that students have coming out is opening a lot of different doors, um, especially for students that might have paired with computer science and have some coding experience. Um, that are going into kind of tech consulting areas, students that are going into healthcare analytics and informatics, um, and we even have students that are going into the environmental side of things with their technology skills as well. So, so again, a long answer, they're kind yeah. of spread off all over. And if you want to get some specifics about what companies and firms students are at, 
the William Ray Cohen Career Center houses all of that information. And I think they might actually have a session that's been recorded and saved on the day for admitted students section. And so you can go back in there and look at what kind of support they have going on for students. And depending on which pathway students go, there's different kinds of preparation, right? So your mock interviews, your resume reviews, um, video interviewing, and you may not realize that often ends up being kind of a first screen for companies uh, before you do your on-site interviews. And so how do we help students get prepared for that kind of professional presence? How do we work on networking activities and alumni engagement activities that are going on? How do we prep them for technical interviewing and case interviewing? So a lot of different mechanisms that are in place to support students depending on where they want to go. Awesome, awesome. Um, all right, so then we're getting some questions kind of about size. So how many students are in the undergraduate business school and how many students are in the typical class? Okay, so undergrad business at any point in time, we admit about 225 majors a year and then we're around about 120 minors a year. So we double that out. We have about 450 majors and we're still with about 200 minors. So 650 business undergraduate students. And it's a good size, right? Small enough that people know each other, but not too small that you know everybody <laughs> and you <laughs> know your faculty well. So within the Mason School, the very largest class that I have is a 60 c classroom. And so you, maybe your principles of accounting course or your statistics course might be in that or business foundations. But for the most part, our core major classes sit about 45 students. And then when you get down into your electives and more of your major courses, you're probably sitting more in that 35 student range. And some of our seminars, we're going down to 10 students, 15 students, um, sometimes doing cross courses with other departments on campus. So those ones can get pretty small. Um, but I would say average with us, probably sitting between 35 and 45 students at a time. Um, all right, so we just got one question. What do you mean when you say that students enter as sophomores but must reach junior standing of 54? Okay, so the difference, so most of our students that will be starting with us in fall of their social junior year, okay, um, that's, so let's go with that example. So I have an entry point of fall of junior year. And so by the time that you come into your first day of classes, you have to have those prerequisites done and you have to have 54 earned hours. Now, when you actually apply to start with us for that fall entry term, you're going to apply in early spring of your sophomore year. And so you'll be applying as a social spring sophomore, um, applying to come in as a perhaps a social junior. Um, but think about this, maybe you came in with a whole semester's worth of academic credit. So you're kind of ahead. And so you might apply for us during your social fall semester to start with us during your social spring semester of your sophomore year, um, but you're already at academic junior standing. And so I know there's the difference between the two that exist. And so when you're applying, you're going to have these credits and these prereqs all in progress. And you don't have to have those finished until you actually are matriculating into the program. So it gives some students some flexibility if they need to pick up a course over the summer um, because they're just three credits shy of being able to start early and they want to do that, that's fine. So um, lots of flexibility for when students come in, but think about it as the day you start classes, you have to have those prereqs done and all of those credits earned. Great. All right, well, we currently have no questions queued, so keep them coming, everyone. That was a great time to be asking questions to the people who have all of the right answers for you. Um, but I guess just to fill the time a little bit, um, what advice would you give to these students on this day? Uh, who are coming to ah. Hey, Beth, do you want to answer that one? I do. I think the big thing is, is coming in, being excited about Wima Mary, taking the, talking with the community and Wima Mary, and also reaching out on the Mason School with all the different opportunities that are out there. Do the right thing. Reach out to myself. You can see my email out there. I can help you with the process. I've been meeting with students nonstop. Enjoy your time. Um, breathe through it. Take a business foundation course. That's amazing. Diversity in the workplace. A couple of opportunities for you out there. Um, also, we have a student panel at 2 o'clock. I guess I need to talk about that. I think that's an opportunity to have six students in marketing, business analytics, accounting, um, finance. So you'll, you'll learn a lot from them and how their journey went through with Wayman Mary and all. So um, enjoy, enjoy the liberal arts side of Wayman Mary. Also, we're recording this session, so we'll definitely post this later on today. Jen, you're doing a great job. Um, one thing I, do, I was going to bring up, um, I think you might already hit it, transfer credits coming in. Do you mm -hmm. want to talk about that a little bit? 
Yeah, I was just going to say we got another question. Mm -hmm. If I'm coming in with an associate's degree being labeled as an academic junior, what courses do you recommend I take to explore the economic career field and just transfer credit in general? Yep. Beth, you want to take that one? I can, absolutely. You want to get with me right up front. If you've got your 54 credits and you're coming with all your prerequisites, you'll be applying for June 1st um, application cycle. Um, or if you need to still come and take some extra credits coming here, you've already got the associate's degree, you're about to come into the business school. Jen, you want to jump in on this? Yeah, so I think it's just going to depend on how everything transfers. So if that associate's degree you've earned here in Virginia comes with some transferability of those credits. And so what I would say is right when you get to campus, come talk with us about that because clearly you're going to be ahead on credits, which is going to give you a lot of flexibility. So if you're looking to do um, you know, even finish in a shorter time period, two years, two and a half years, then going into a master's program or having the flexibility to do some co-ops and some internships along the way or the flexibility to do double majors. Um, we've got a lot of things that we can do, but the earlier that you come see us, then we can really map those things out for you as well. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, so we're getting some questions about um, some the prereqs. Can you kind of walk through a little bit more of the prerequisite classes that students have to take? Sure. So we've got five requisite courses that students will need to take before they enter the School of Business if you're coming in as a major. Now, if you're coming in as a minor, you don't necessarily have to do all five. So that's one of those things that you're going to want to reach out to Beth and say, okay, I want to come in and marketing for a minor. What are the courses that I need to do? Because it won't be the entire set. So students are going to need to take introductory microeconomics and macroeconomics. And so William Mary usually offers one in the fall, one in the spring. Um, Pretty typical sequence for students to take even during their freshman year. You're going to need to take calculus and if you have taken calculus in high school and you end up with AP credit and the same goes with the econs, great! Use that AP credit to satisfy the prerequisites. So APs, IBs, dual enrollment credit, if you come in the door to William Mary with those there is no reason for you to retake those courses once you get to campus. The one exception to that is the fourth course that we need is a statistics course and so stats is a great prep to get you ready for statistics. Um, faculty really want you to take a statistics course and we encourage students to take that stats course and also our principles of accounting course close to when you're actually going to matriculate into the program because those tend to be the two courses with content that you're going to rely on the most particularly in your introductory finance course and your introductory analytics course. So coming in and having had accounting two years before you're actually using it in your finance course Right, we can help with the sequencing of those things as well. Absolutely, and that transitions nicely into um, someone who wants to know a little bit more about the block and what that looks like. Oh, the block is so cool. And you'll have to, if you're on the student panel, ask them about the block experience. So the block experience you will see, um, and other schools have something similar to what we're doing. It's really the chance for students to come in and explore all of the disciplines that we have available. So up until the point of matriculation, the only real business course you would have had from a discipline perspective is accounting. And we know some of you are going to fall in love with accounting. Others of you are going to say, I'm not sure that's the right fit for me. Um, and so what we do in the foundation semester is give students a chance to take a course in finance, one in analytics, and one in marketing. And so that now you'll be able to make an informed decision as you finalize your actual discipline and major. Um, so that's one of the, the key goals within the block is that now very early on you're able to select and kind of try on for size all of the different areas of study. The other thing that we have going on with the foundation semester is a huge emphasis on teamwork and how to navigate through those teams because you'll see in business schools and when you go into your jobs a lot of it is going to be team-based learning and learning how to interact with diverse perspectives and diverse teammates how to use the technology, how to make sure that voices are heard through that process. And so each student will be assigned to a five person team and they'll go across all of the foundation semester courses with that same set of students. And so they'll have the same schedules and then be able to, to kind of work around when their team meetings are gonna take place, um, how they're gonna be doing presentations and, and working through their case assignments. And so within the foundation semester, you will find that you will have several team-based projects in all of your courses. And it really gives our students a chance to figure out what a long-term team commitment is. So it looks very different than what you may be looking at. Um, but I, I, I can just anticipate here some of the students being like, yeah, yeah, I've done teamwork in high school. It is different um, because you've got a long-term commitment with these students. 
and you really get to know your faculty on there. And then the other thing that we're putting in with the foundation semester is a lot of professional development kind of overview. So what are the, the things that you need to have in your immediate toolkit? And we have a set of executive partners. Um, so William and Mary, it tends to have a great population in Williamsburg area of folks that have retired down from Northern Virginia. And we've been able to capitalize on those folks. And right now the Mason School of Business has about 140 um, C-suite type folks that have retired to the area and work as coaches and mentors for our students. And this is a program that started out with our MBA students and has transitioned into the undergrads. And you will find EPs at kind of every step of your journey here. And they will be running a number of workshops on just getting you comfortable with how do I do my, my elevator pitches? How do I introduce myself? Um, how do I navigate through a career fair? What do I do in terms of follow-ups? Um, so they'll be serving as coaches for all of our students during that first semester. So that, you know, I think about it as a semester of building a foundation and what your knowledge is, and then also having the chance to really explore and then customize what it is that you want to study. So thank you so much. Um, all right, so what opportunities do freshmen and sophomores have to gain exposure to various aspects of business to decide if business is what they want to study before entering the school? Ah, uh, Beth, will you take that one? Oop, but you have to unmute. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. So the question is, what can they do in advance and if they really want to do business? Yeah. You're actually going to be taking the prerequisites, of course. That's the first part. The second one here is the business foundation course we've talked about earlier. It's a great way um, to understand the disciplines that go across the business, whether it's your finance, your marketing. He's also bringing in speakers to help you with all this. So it's a great opportunity for you. All the students, um, just rave, love the course. Um, one of my guys said to me, it was eight o'clock class, and he said, what a way to wake up eight o'clock in the morning. He goes, I would never do another eight o'clock class, but having this class, it just keeps me motivated. Um, so we look forward to that course. The other one's the diversity in the workplace. What a great opportunity. Um, um, if you're interested in finance, you have the um, finance history course that out there. So a couple of options for you. Yeah. So we've got coursework things, we've got student orgs that are going on, we've got events. Uh, one of the other things for students that are interested, talk to your peers, like, right? Talk to the students, to your RAs in your hallways, figure out who's studying business, why they chose to study a business, what it is that they really like about business. Um, they are a great set of, of resources that will help you navigate um, through, you know, the pathways in the school, how to get involved, what to be doing on that, that side of things as well. All right, and so then what advice would you give to help um, increase students' advantage of being accepted into the business? Ah, okay. So what I would say is, especially if you're in this session right now, right? So you're already coming in with this inclination that you might wanna be exploring business, right? So you might look a little bit different than a student that hasn't been thinking about business. So for those of you that are already thinking about business, what advice I can give you is to get involved, right? So to come on into Miller Hall, make this place your home, get involved in some of the student organizations. Um, you're gonna find we're a pretty welcoming community. So then that way you'll be able to talk with a little bit more um, self-confidence about why you think business is a good fit for you. So that would be, so getting involved in the student org, seeing what we're doing. Um, the other thing that you can be doing is students sometimes just kind of start exploring, right? And so it might be things that you're doing. What are the kinds of things that you're reading? What news are you following? Um, how are you tying that to other things and classes that you might be taking across campus? And so, you know, looking at current events, there's a lot going on right now and, and understanding what is business's role in that side of things. The other thing that we've got is some students will actually do some jobs on campus and get involved in different centers or doing research with faculty a number of students we're seeing more and more often are doing multiple internships. And so kind of gone are the days of just an internship between junior and senior year. Um, we have probably about 70% of our students are doing at least two internships and then about 40% are doing three internships. And so gaining internships or externship experience kind of shadowing type things to be looking at business is really helpful as well. So with all of that, right, you kind of paint this picture of, I've been intentionally exploring business, right? And so when it comes time to be doing your application, you'll be able to highlight those things. I went to Meet the Firms Friday and I participated in the alumni panels and I was really moved by what the alums were saying. I never considered this as a career pathway and it really excites me. 
um, that would be one thing to do. You might be a student that got involved in our investment club um, very early on and you were like, okay, I'm a junior analyst coming on in and I'm so excited because by the end of my freshman year, I actually pitched a stock and, and realized what was going on and being part of the team and camaraderie and that. You might be a student that went and took, um, participated on our marketing careers trek up to New York. And so got to go visit several businesses and companies and went, wow, I had never knew there was so much going on in the advertising space. I'm just invigorated by that. And I know this is the kind of thing I want to do. And I find myself like looking up how to optimize websites and look at media traffic and all of those things, right? So everybody's mm -hmm. going to look a little bit different. So think about how is it personalized to you? How you came to business may differ, but really take some ownership now that you're moving in to university studies. Um, you own this journey, right? So make the most of it. Explore. Um, you're going to find some things that you run into and go, oh, yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. Perfectly fine. That's a great thing, right? And then how do you pivot the other direction? That's normal in the process. So there's very few students that come in and know exactly what they want to do. Um, the other thing that I would say is keep this in mind. Most of the jobs that you're going to be going into by the time you graduate, three or four years from now, probably don't even exist right now, right? The kind of nature of the work, it is changing so quickly. And so what we're really looking at is how do you develop the skills and the mindset to be adaptable and innovative and kind of entrepreneurial in your thinking um, that you're gonna be able to flex and, and move through um, and be looking at all of those job opportunities when the time is right. Awesome. Well, we only have a couple minutes left. Um, so I think maybe now would be a great time for any final words of wisdom that you have for these students or anything like that. Jen, I was going to mention that major program, when you come into the major, you are, as you said earlier, you are not stuck. If you come in thinking you want business analytics and you get in there, you're not stuck with business analytics. You can switch to a finance. I mean, I think that's real important to know. Yeah, because they can't. And they can switch even into going into senior year, actually some students that do internships between that junior and senior year and think this is exactly what I wanted to do and come back and go, no, that's not no. what I want to do, <laughs> right? Um, and what a gift that you've got a chance to know that now before you had a job in that area to come back in and say, wait, I want to readjust my schedule. I want to pivot and go a different direction. And we have enough flexibility in our curriculum to allow students to do that. And so at any point when there's opportunities that present themselves, we'll see students kind of meandering through their pathways and that is perfectly fine to do. Um, so I guess my last words that I would have, um, JD, as I'm thinking about this, is there's good options, right? Um, business schools, you're gonna find similar things. We all have great student organizations. We all have career development. Um, we've got similar courses and academics. I think the thing that really differentiates William & Mary is the feeling of the people and the place. Okay. So you are surrounded by people who all are going on their own individual journeys. It's very personalized. It's customized. You can make it what you want. And what you've got to be looking at is, are you going to find a home in the school that you choose that really lets you thrive and flourish, be yourself? Um, are you going to be surrounded by a peer set that kind of stretches you, right, to help you grow? Um, we have to get comfortable being sometimes discomfort um, in that place so that we can make those strides and, and take on new challenges. Because we're looking at how do we best prepare our students um, to go out and live lives of principled achievement, right? Like we're in this for the long game, not for the short run. Um, so if you're looking for that kind of place, I think we're, we're a place that you can be. You can be multidisciplinary. You can and I'll be really excited and doing things in arts and sciences and complementing that in, in the School of Business as well. So as you're making your final decisions, take a look around. What's the kind of environment and place that you have? Do you have the flexibility to meander through and, and really take the best opportunities that are available to you and customizing it to where your goals and interests are? Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for your questions and thank you so much, Jen and Beth, for answering them. This has been absolutely amazing. We are so thankful to have such a wonderful business program on our campus and so blessed to have such amazing people working there as well. Um, again, thank you all so much for attending. Um, please make sure to check out some of our other events happening today. Econ will be starting right at one o'clock right after this if you'd like to check out what kind of those prerequisite courses you'll have to be taking. Um, and join us again at two o'clock for the Business School Students for Students panel um, where you can ask